before we go ahead styling out all of the pages, we just need to add them into our templates because we now want to override them. So we'll just go ahead down to our templates and we will add in the line in the directories of os.path.join. We'll give it the base directory again and templates and all of. So this is just so that Django knows that the templates that we want all of to load are actually within our root template directory. Okay, so this is opposed to loading the ones that are installed in the virtual environment because we want to override them with our own styling. So we're going to go ahead and get started styling our templates. So we're going to be using two extra packages for this. So I'm going to be using Django Crispy Forms and Crispy Bootstrap 5 as the template. So this will just enable us to inject some Bootstrap 5 into the forms with minimal CSS needed on top. So we'll go ahead by pip installing both of those. So pip install Django Crispy Forms and pip install crispy bootstrap 5. So next up we're going to freeze our requirements again as we always want to keep these up to date. And we need to add a couple of settings in order to get these to work. So we'll go ahead and add these into our installed app. So let's create another heading for other. We'll give it crispy forms and we'll give it the crispy bootstrap 5 and we'll give it the crispy bootstrap 5. So the next thing that we need to do then is we need to set our templates up. So we're going to say crispy allowed template packs. So we're going to give it crispy allowed template packs. And that's going to be bootstrap five. And we will just give it the crispy template pack of bootstrap five. Last things then is we need to add them as options. So underneath where we have the context processors, we will add built-ins with an array. And inside here, we will give it crispy forms dot template tags dot crispy form tags. And the last one is the crispy forms dot template tags. And that is the crispy forms field. So these template tags will allow us to use the tags within the HTML to load the crispy form ones. Okay. So that completes the settings that we need in order to use that. So we're going to go ahead now and start styling our pages. So we'll start with the login page. And we're going to remove the social account. We're going to change the block to block title because that is what we were using in our base.html. We are also going to remove everything to do with the social accounts because we're not using them. So we will also need to remove the end if. We're going to give our form a class of form with some padding of two. We're going to change the ASP to crispy because we want it to load as our crispy form, not as paragraphs. And we're going to change the class on the button for BTN, BTN primary, give it a width of 25 and a margin bottom of two. So I am actually going to move the button above the anchor class and I'm going to give the anchor class a D block class so that it sits on its own line. 
so the last thing that I want to do is add a container around the whole thing. So it's going to be div with a class of container and a class of text center. So you hit the tab key then and that creates our divs. We'll indent everything in. We'll move on then to the sign up page, so we'll do the same, we'll remove the title, we'll give it a full class and some padding of two, we'll switch over the paragraphs for crispy. I'm going to remove this quote and just type in sign up. We'll go ahead then and add a div with our container and text center classes. And move on to the logout page. So again, we will update the title and we will wrap it in a div with container and text center. So we're gonna go ahead now and update our header. So we'll go ahead in here and we will add in three new nav items. So we're going to have one for the logout, one for the register, and one for the sign in. So the first one's going to be the logout. The next one will be register. And the next one will be login. So we're going to use the all of URL patterns here. So we'll have accounts forward slash logout. We'll have accounts and sign up. And then for the final, we will have accounts login. Okay, so we're then going to go ahead and we're gonna put an if statement around here. And we're gonna say if request.user dot is authenticated, And we're going to have an else statement, and then we will end our if statement. So what this is going to do is it's going to check if the user is logged in. If the user is logged in, it will show the logout button, and otherwise it will show the register and log in. So obviously we don't want to have a nav bar that's full of links that they shouldn't see. Like there's no need for them to see the logout if they're not logged in and the same for the register and the login buttons. The last thing I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add a URL resolver match. So I want to be able to add an active class to my nav bar. And in order for that to work, we need a way to determine what kind of page we're on. So if we say request resolver match dot URL name as URL name, and we'll go ahead and close that with off down underneath the nav. So for every tag we open, we must close. Okay, so what this line's actually gonna do is, remember earlier on when we made the home page? So when we were creating that URL um, pattern, we gave it a name. So this will enable us to check the page that we're on and check if it has a certain name. That way then we can dynamically add this active class. So we'll go ahead here and add our if statement. So we can say, if URL name is equal to home, then add our active class. So it's very important that we add a space here because if we have the if statement directly after that will have nav link active is one full class. So we will go ahead now and we'll add this to our new classes. So this one is going to be accounts underscore log out 
as that's the all auths URL pattern name. We'll have accounts, sign up, and accounts login. So we'll open up our base.css and we'll create a dot active class. We'll give this a border bottom of two pixels solid and we'll give it our blue variable. We'll also increase the font weight so that these are a little bit bolder and stand out. We'll then go ahead and make our form class. So I'm going to give this one a width of 100%, a margin of 3% on the top and bottom, and auto for left and right. We'll give it a box shadow using our small box shadow variable. And finally, we'll give it a border radius of 5 pixels just to round off those edges. We'll go ahead now and start the run server. And check out the live site. So as we can see now, our active class has been applied. So login page looks good. Registered page. Oh, missed a button there. So we'll just test the log in and make sure that actually works. Okay, so we're signed in and we've also missed the log out buttons. So we'll just quickly switch through to those and add those classes back in. So that was the log out page. So we have the button. So we'll give that one a class of BTN, BTN primary and a width of 25. So we'll copy those and add those onto the sign up button. So we'll go ahead and check that out. Perfect, log out and register. So that completes the styling of our pages. So next we will move on to the CRUD functionality and get started with our recipes.